The Iberian Peninsula, situated in the southeast of Europe, is a land of great ecological wealth. High mountains, steppe lands, coast and deserts combine with three radically different types of climate, Mediterranean, Oceanic and Continental. As a result, there is an incredible variety of ecosystems which provide the country with some of the most beautiful natural landscapes in Europe. In contrast to these wonderful landscapes, some of the most valuable natural areas are often quite unspectacular. Some real natural treasures are to be found hidden behind dull facades. One of these paradises is in Samora, near the Portuguese border. Near the village of Villa Fafila, there are some shallow lagoons surrounded by agricultural land. They do not make for a great view, but they are included in the International Agreement on Protection of Wetlands. The European Union has declared them a special protection area, and the Spanish government has classified them as a nature reserve. They are of unique and unquestionable value. The importance of these lagoons for man has changed over the centuries. During the 10th century, they were the only salt flats in the kingdom of Leon and were used for this purpose. Several villages were founded around them and they lived off the salt business until the development of trade brought Portuguese salt, which was of high quality and cheaper to the area. Pigeon rearing was very common along with traditional agriculture and livestock farming. Immense pigeon lofts, today in ruins, can be found scattered all over the plains. They were made of adobe, a mixture of clay and straw, which is still used in some parts of the world. The pigeon holes, or uvacas, were organized around interior yards in a solid wall parallel to the external facade. Many of these pigeon lofts were better constructed than the houses where the townspeople lived. There are 180 of these buildings left in Villa Fafila. Each one could house hundreds of pigeons, which gives an idea of the economic significance of this activity. Pigeon rearing was not open to all and sundry. The right to have a pigeon loft was a privilege only granted to the highest classes of feudal society. The birds did not require any special care and only needed to be fed in the winter. The excrement was highly rated as fertilizer and the chicks were sold for consumption. The profits to be obtained from this business were considerable. Over time, the business became less profitable and was eventually abandoned. The right to keep pigeon lofts was abolished along with other privileges of the nobility and the land gradually changed hands from large landowners to small local owners. Most people worked in arable or livestock farming. Industrialization and the mechanization of agriculture in the middle of the 20th century caused the rural population to shrink drastically. Many villages have a lower population today than at the beginning of the 19th century. The times when the salt flats were the main source of income for the region are long gone by. Today they have no economic value, but they have acquired an enormous ecological value instead. A value which becomes evident with the start of the autumn rains.
After a summer in which they have almost completely dried up, the salt flats fill up with water again. Nature is preparing them for the arrival of their winter guests, the birds. Grey lag geese, common shell ducks and mallards are just some of the multitude of species which choose these salt flats for their winter residence. Flocks arrive every year from northern Europe to settle in the few wetlands left on the Iberian Peninsula. They stay there until the following spring when they go back to their homelands to mate. In order to help people appreciate the value of these lagoons, the Castilla y Leon regional government created the Via Fafila Visitor Center, in which members of the public are shown the importance of these ecosystems for the birds of Europe. Ignorance of this fact led to the drying out of most of Spanish wetlands in the 1970s because they were thought to be a source of malaria infection. This disease was wiped out, but Spain lost one of its greatest natural treasures forever. Villa Fafila was saved at the last moment when 70 hectares of wetlands had already been dried out. The center has a small adjoining lagoon. All year round you can find examples here of all the main species that visit Villa Fafila. The most important of all these in terms of rarity is this barnacle goose. The barnacle goose breeds in Greenland and spends the winter along the coasts of the North Sea. The birds that visit these saltwater lagoons are 2,000 kilometers away from others of their species and more than 200 kilometers away from the nearest coast. There are many common species too, such as mallards, regular visitors to Spanish lagoons. These birds have the last feathers of one wing cut off so they cannot fly. They live in captivity. This means that at any time of the year, the visitors to the center can see the different species that inhabit the salt flats even when the wild flocks return to their winter breeding grounds. The wetlands have recovered after the summer and, with the water, have returned to life. The different birds that live here enjoy the last few days of summer heat before the arrival of the hard Castilian winter. In the coldest months, the temperature may fall to 14 degrees below zero, although even then, average temperatures are above zero. These conditions are bearable for both coots and the anatidae. In their homelands in the north of Europe, winter is so cold that the lagoons where they feed are permanently frozen and therefore inaccessible until spring. Of the varied fauna that visit Via Fafila every year, there are three species that deserve particular attention. The first only stops off, the second spends the winter and the third lives here permanently. One of them is reaching the lagoons before dawn. Their cries, which are necessary to keep them all together in the dark, tell us they are cranes.
Their journey began in the Scandinavian peninsula at the end of August. After crossing the Baltic, they reached northern Germany, where they joined up with flocks from Finland and Russia. They stayed there for two or three weeks. Once they regained their strength, the group continued on its journey. They did not stop again until they reached the Iberian Peninsula. Of the 10,000 cranes that make this journey, about 1,000 make another stop within the peninsula. The lagoons of Iafafila have not yet recovered from the summer drought, but the pastures and farmlands that surround them provide the travelers with sufficient food. Seeds, bulbs, stems and small animals provide them with the energy they need to finish their journey. Cranes inhabited the Iberian Peninsula in the past and would still do so today if man had not dried out their breeding grounds and plowed them up. The last pair to breed in Spain was in 1951 in the La Janda Lagoon. Today, that lagoon has ceased to exist. After a few weeks rest at the end of autumn, the flocks fly off again. Their final destinations are the pastures of Extremadura and Andalusia, where they set up their winter residences. The cranes are not the only migratory birds to stop over in Via Fafila. At the end of September, the lagoons are invaded by another great migratory bird, the grey lag goose, also known as the wild goose. For several days, the skies are covered by infinite numbers of flocks on their way to the marshes of the Guadalquivir River near the south coast of the Iberian Peninsula. More than 70,000 geese cleave the skies on their way to their winter quarters. Many of them stop off in the Via Fafila wetlands. Like the crane, the grey-legged goose never spent the winter in these lagoons, but in 1975, something changed. That year, a flock of 1,000 geese did not continue their journey south. The following year, the phenomenon was repeated, and six years later, the winter population of Via Fafila was over 23,000. Geese choose their mate when they are three or four years old, and they become mates for life. The bond between them is so strong that when one of them dies, the other rejects the company of the group and often ends up as an outsider. Thousands of geese invade the arable lands to feed on the cereals that have sprouted after the summer. A close relation, the bean goose has joined them. These birds are very rare and are in retreat. Some Central European countries, where they also spend the winter, have taken measures to protect them. 
These territories are much closer to their breeding grounds, and more and more birds every year decide to stay there instead of continuing their journey south. Cranes and geese are two opposing sides of the same coin. In both cases, the action of man on their habitat has had a crucial effect on their population levels. The geese have benefited from protective measures and from the recovery of their habitats, whereas the cranes have had to suffer the destruction of theirs. The protection and recovery of the sulflets has not only benefited the geese, all the species that visit or live in the wetlands have seen their living conditions improve. Plant life has extended and there is an abundance of aquatic fauna. The birds find good places to shelter and a plentiful supply of food. Many populations which were in retreat have recovered and this in turn has benefited the great predator of the Spanish mountains, the wolf. When winter arrives, snow covers the mountains and the wolves go down to the valleys and lower areas. Hunting is becoming more and more difficult so the presence of large concentration of birds provides a perfect opportunity to find food. Some prey fly away quickly, while others look for protection in the vegetation. This mistake will cost them their lives. The landscape around the lagoons is made up almost entirely of cereal fields. These lands have also been protected, and not only because they provide food for the birds that visit the reserve. The great buster, the largest flying bird in Europe, lives here too. Biafafila has the most important bustard colony in the world. Around 2,000 of these birds live in the region on a permanent basis. At different times of the year, flocks of bustards move around within the region in search of the best pastures, but the relatively benign climate means that emigration is unnecessary. The bustard lives in open spaces. Here it finds the pastures it needs, and any predators can be easily located in time to make a quick escape. Its diet is composed of plant stems, leaves, and seeds. In the spring, it complements this diet with small animals which provide it with proteins. This extra energy will help it during the courting and mating seasons. Both sexes have a similar plumage, but the male may be twice the size of the female. In addition, it has some characteristic feathers on its neck called ruffs, which make it unmistakable. The bustard lives on the ground. Its weight, males can weigh up to 18 kilos, puts it on the borderline as far as its ability to fly is concerned. Whenever it can, it prefers to walk. Its flights are short and normally close to the ground. Its population levels fell dramatically all over Europe, 
when uncontrolled hunting and the irrigation of land and the consequent changes in crops brought this species to the verge of extinction. The bustard disappeared in Switzerland, England, Denmark, Sweden, and most of France. In Spain, too, population levels fell drastically. Only after their ecosystems were protected and hunting was prohibited was this process halted. The conservation of lagoons, such as Villa Fafila, has been of fundamental importance. In contrast to what happens in other colonies in Europe, the Spanish bustards do not immigrate. They can complete their life cycle in the wetlands without depending on the conservation of other regions. The reproduction period for bustards is in the spring. Groups divide up according to sex and the males also stand apart from each other. Each suitor searches for a hillock or a place where the females can see him. Once he has chosen his stage, the courting begins. The fields are filled with males doing their displays. The neck swells up to double its normal diameter. They twist up their wings and unfurl their tails to show off the white feathers inside. Each male continues its courting display alone until a female shows interest and approaches him. And here is the first one. Fights between males do not occur very often, and when they do, the rivals do not suffer serious injuries. In many cases, a comparative demonstration of strength is sufficient to make one of the males give up, although, as you can see, this is not always the case. Via Fafila is one of the last places in Europe where the great bustard can feel safe. The protection of the ecosystem and the prohibition of hunting have given this endangered bird a breathing space. Like the geese and the cranes, the great bustards have found a place to rest in these saltwater lagoons. The lands, which for man had been a symbol of horrible diseases, have turned out to be a unique and irreplaceable ecosystem for many birds, a paradise hidden among the fields of the cold Castilian steppes.